Good morning, everybody. Bee Bear. Are you Eugene Bear on YouTube? Are you period? Check out my uh, archive. Over a hundred teachings. Today I'm going to take three verses of scripture and try to open them up to you from a spiritual point of view. I was given a few gifts by the Lord and a spiritual visitation and filled with the Holy Spirit of truth. And yes, I do Hikamo Shundai almost daily in the shower. <clears throat> Book of Hebrews, fourth chapter. If you have a King James, and if you're a studier and you have more than one Bible, get a second Bible, preferably a uh, Revised Standard 1952 or Amplified or whatever your study Bible is that you open up. Because I want to expand 416 to you. And I got there when I looked up. Let me turn back. Last sip of cold coffee. I have to lubricate my throat. I had my tonsils and add noise out. My throat runs dry. Real easy. In <clears throat> when you start to read, basic, you've experienced basic salvation with confessing and believing in the Lord, calling Jesus Lord and Lord and Savior and believing that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. Romans 10. Read Romans 10. Now when you begin to read, I want you to start reading with Ephesians, the third chapter, before you read chapters 1 and 2. Now in uh, Ephesians, the third chapter, I believe I ran into it. Uh, maybe not. Let's go back to 2.18. 2, Access. Now you find access in the Bible three times, major doctrine. Twice in Ephesians. I think I think the other one was in Romans. I could be wrong there. Look it up in your concordance. Get a concordance. So, here's my point. The Lord Jesus Christ was the forerunner with his precious shed blood, a ransom payment that actually did more than just take down the sin barrier between man and God. It did three things. Sin barrier, blood on the mercy seat, brought in the new covenant of glory and grace. Love, grace, mercy, peace, and joy. New covenant. Now, today. Part two, the second is better. Now, today, where I'm communicating with you, and we're both breathing air, and we've lived to this point as human beings. Now, today, we have access because of the forerunner, the Lord Jesus Christ, went in to the holiest of holies, to the mercy seat, once for all, forever. Once, once, once it's done. Okay? No more animal blood sacrifices. The scripture says, the Old Testament or wherever it says, there's no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. That's how Israelite Jewish people think. So they believe they must, and then they made a, a holiday to substitute that because they didn't have a temple and an altar where they could do animal blood sacrifices anymore. But you don't need to because the Lord's precious shed blood, human blood, took care of that once for all and brought in part two, the new. New covenant, second covenant. The first is to vanish away, in Hebrews it says. God's word says that. So we put too much emphasis on the first and not enough emphasis on the second. And my point being, in Ephesians, we're going to Hebrew, back to Hebrews 4, in Ephesians 2.18, access by one spirit unto the Father. And we can come boldly, and we can come near. Because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did. He went in first. So now we have access. That access leads to entrance. We have introduction by the mediator, the Lord Jesus Christ, seated in heavenly places. So he introduces us because we confess him before men. 
he confesses us for the, before the Father and his angels at our coming to glory, immortality, and eternal life, dwelling in the light. Okay, so access, entrance, introduction before the throne of grace to find mercy. Where are we getting that? That's where we're going. Back to Hebrews. Hebrews 4.14. 4, I think I have time. Three minutes. Seeing then that ye have a great high priest. We get high priest the second time here for a true witness of two. And uh, in the next verse, and I add great, and great is great is great. Great high priest. Great is a great word. So I like great. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, entered the heavens, passed. The Lord Jesus Christ, I added Lord in Christ. Some Bibles just say Jesus the Son. But this is the Lord Jesus Christ. Give him his deity. <laughs> oh, I won't come up with that. Uh, Christy, I saw your teaching with Al. And Al... The, uh, the way I answered your question, I believe he agreed with me. Anyway, I'll leave that there. Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, first begotten. The Son was back there before earth and Adam and Eve. In being likeness, spirit form, Christ anointing form. No, no human temple or body yet for the Lord Jesus Christ the first begotten Son of God. He was first begotten in thought and what he would do and in Christ's spirit before he came forth from the womb water. All right, so much for that. First begotten of God, let us hold fast or stand. Stand four times if you include withstand in the sixth chapter of Ephesians. Stand, stand, withstand, stand. Or stand, withstand, stand, stand. I think that's the correct way. Okay. Verse 15. For we have not an high priest, great once for all, a great high priest, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. That's kind of, King James does reverse stuff. Basically, putting it simply is, our great high priest has been tempted in all ways and does know what we experience as a human being. He came as a human being, didn't come as an angel, and he was tempted with the same sins and temptations that we're tempted with. So he can know how we think or act or feel. He experienced the same things. Okay, uh, middle of 15 but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He was the only perfect human being, tempted in all ways, yet without sin. Didn't practice sin. Okay, verse 16, I want to open this up to you. We're doing good, 842. Let us therefore come boldly and revise standard. You want to read the 16, 416 in a revised standard or an amplified, open it up. Boldly draw near. I added draw near. That's what Revised Standard says. So we come boldly or we come and we draw near unto the throne of grace. Unto the throne where the Lord is at, ascended and seated. We come to our Savior, our mediator, one who speaks for us, who's been tempted in all ways because he 100% human, 100% God. All right. So, let us therefore come boldly, let us draw near to the throne of grace. Grace, favor, grace and favor are exchanged in some translations, and mercy. And when mercy takes its place, it's right after grace. The last three or four letters, uh, what was the fourth one I found the other day? There is a fourth, but for sure, first, Timothy, Titus, and 2 Timothy, major doctrine, 
grace takes its place between, or mercy takes its place between grace and peace. So I have a teaching about mercy taking its place. Okay, we draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive or obtain mercy. It was the mercy seat where the precious shed blood went. The human precious shed blood once for all forever. Done. Okay? And now we can receive or obtain mercy and find grace, true witness, grace, grace. It's glory, glory, and grace, grace. Start in glory, it's going to end in glory, glorious and glorified eternal. That's one of my word phrases. Okay? We got grace here twice, true witness. Grace to help in the time of need. Okay? And 10 minutes and 52 seconds. I want to go somewhere, but the Spirit said no, so I won't. I hope I opened up 16 for you. I'll read it again. Let us therefore come boldly, draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive or obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And we can do that now. Access by one spirit unto the Father. We can pray in the spirit and come ourselves. We, it's opened. The way is made. The forerunner is gone in. The Lord Jesus Christ, ascended and seated, is important. Ascended and seated is found in many letters. Our great high priest forever is ascended and seated. His scepter is righteousness after the order of Melchizedek. I have to quit 1151. Man, I just tell myself, don't teach past eight minutes, and here it's 12 minutes. I love you, spirit teacher truth teacher. The word of God is truth. Get into the word. Learn how to go beyond reading to study that you may grow in the knowledge of God and be able to stand in faith in these last days because it's going to get tougher yet and only the remnant will make it through and stand. The majority of Christianity is going to follow a deceiving spirit. The word says so. So I am calling out to get as many as strong as I can standing in the remnant of truth. Love you. Bye.